Here are the notes and now the comments on our types of crystals, so section 11.6. Uh, all of these notes can be found uh, as a separate document on the Moodle site, so if you want to click on those, that first and copy down the notes and then watch the video to kind of add uh, some pieces of information for you. Um, we have four different types. We have the ionic crystals. Okay, they're going to be made of different sized particles. In other words, you have a cation, anion, so you have different sizes there within the crystal. Uh, that's going to kind of affect the intermolecular forces, the IMFs, so have a high melting point, uh, as well as high lattice energies. So remember lattice energy from chapter 9, uh, the energy required to break apart an ionic compound into its uh, gaseous ions. Okay. Uh, ionic crystals are not very conductive in the solid state. Okay. Now, ionic crystals are conductive uh, in the liquid or especially when dissolved in water because they are soluble and break apart into their ions. But as a solid crystal, they are not very conductive. Okay. For covalent crystals, these are 3D networks of covalent bonds. They have high melting points and are very, very hard, uh, and they will also not be conductive. Okay, so the main, main difference between these two right here is we have covalent bonds present in a covalent crystal. Aha, there's a clue. Uh, and then in our ionic crystals, we have ions. Uh, molecular crystals, these are networks of molecules. They have low melting points and, and are very soft, okay, and they are also not conductive. Metallic crystals contain metal atoms. They are very uh, varying in metal uh, melting points, metal points, uh, melting points. So we can have high ones, low ones, all the way in between. Uh, but they do have a high uh, varying hardness as well. The thing that changes for metallic crystals versus any of the other crystals uh, are they are conductive. Uh, in parentheses, I've given some examples of the types of crystals. Uh, you will need to be able to identify uh, between these types of crystals given a set of characteristics. That's uh, characteristics at the end. So you need to be able to, uh, if I give you characteristics of a melting point of a thousand degrees, not conductive in a solid uh, state, you would need to be able to identify that as an ionic crystal. If I describe something as having uh, a melting point of, say, 400 degrees uh, and is hard and conductive, you would need to say that it's a metallic crystal. Okay, there's some good problems in sapling uh, that go, go through and give some examples of that. Now, there are examples in your book of each of these crystals, and there are some um, kind of weird ones, ones that don't follow the general rule, as usual in chemistry, um, and I don't want you to memorize those, um, those exceptions to the rule. And essentially what I would like you to do is that if you see an ionic compound, uh, we're going to call that an ionic crystal. Okay, so if you can identify a compound as being ionic, then it's going to form an ionic crystal. For the covalent crystals, this will be a non-metal that's by itself, so an elemental non-metal. Molecular crystals will be uh, things that are covalent molecules. Okay, 
and metallic crystals will be elemental metals. So any example that I give on the test will not be one of the um, exceptions. It will you want to be able to identify their types of crystals according to the type of uh, compound or element that it is. Going over our characteristics of amorphous solids, not really much here to add. Uh, there's no 3D structure, no patterns, there's no repetition, there's no perfection uh, in this solid. Uh, it's just kind of a conglomeration of those solid uh, particles or those solid molecules. Um, and we get an amorphous solid by forming or by cooling the liquid really quickly. So if you want to crystallize something, you do it a very slowly so that uh, that perfect repetition can be um, made sure that it's achieved. Uh, if you don't need that perfection and you cool it really quickly, then you know you're going to get whatever you're going to get out of there. It's not going to be perfect. It's just going to be just a conglomeration of your uh, particles or molecules. An example of an amorphous solid um, are glasses, and they have no um, crystalline structure to them.